All right, thank you. Um, so, hi everyone. As you just said, I'm Guillaume Emon, and I work at Igalia. Uh, even though uh, what I'm going to present was mostly about stuff that I did on my own time, though there are some bits that my awesome company, Igalia, let me do on work time, and that was pretty cool. Um, so, uh, Cheryl just before was saying that uh, like they want to show uh, young girls that technology and science on probably free software is something cool. Um, I'm gonna try to expose that. Um, so uh, it's about hacking the real world. That means trying to do things on. Uh, in that big room with the blue ceiling, you know, outside. You, you have a picture of it here, the blue. Um, more specifically, I'm going to talk about a project that I did this summer, uh, which was to try to take pictures from above using a nice little balloon like that attached to a string with a camera up here. So, more specifically, um, that was the main idea of the project. So, having a balloon, a camera, a string. Uh, we did that at a kind of hippie artsy festival called Nowhere. It's really cool. Uh, so, you had hippies, you had some artistic stuff, a lot of tents. And we, we thought, yeah, we're gonna try put a balloon up. Take, take pictures for the whole week of the, of the event and uh, try to do things with that. Uh, high, uh, most exactly, that was like the stream was 100 meters high. No, that's the other button. Sorry. So that's what I call a very low orbit satellite. Uh, <laughs> Why, why I call it that way? Simply because you have, uh, when the balloon is up, um, well, it's, it's not like the, these projects of trying to take pictures of the stratosphere or something like that. So the balloon stayed at 100 meters high and didn't go higher. Uh, we didn't cut the string. Uh, but still, you have your balloon, your camera, whatever systems you put that stay there uh, for a few hours and you cannot access them directly. So one of the problems with that is how do you press the button of the camera? How do you take pictures? Um, for that project, obviously, we were, we were on a budget. We had uh, some financing from uh, the Nowhere Arts Committee or whatever it was called. Um, but we still had to add some from our pockets, so we were generally going the cheap options. So we had a uh, second-hand uh, Canon compact camera. And with that, uh, you can use a project called CHDK. So first free software project I'm going to talk about. Um, because in, the, in that project, we used a lot of free software projects, hence our presentation here. And I kind of thank you to the community, because without free software, this wouldn't have been possible. So the Canon Hack Development Kit, it's basically um, a firmware addition. It's not a separate firmware that you can install on most compact Canon cameras. And uh, using that, uh, you can do funny things like script your camera in Lua or script your camera in BASIC if you are a bit crazy. <laughs> and so, uh, and yeah, so we programmed the camera with that to take a picture every minute why it was up and it worked. Um, so then the second issue is like monitoring. Like, indeed it worked, but what do you know when the balloon is up? Is it working? Is it taking a picture? Has it set faulted or something? Yeah. <laughs> so we, we thought of doing some electronics, playing with uh, an Arduino board, having an FM emitter attached to it, have it uh, check on the camera via a USB shield for Arduino, so 
I think you stick to your Arduino on on the um, that would plug via USB to the to the camera. And yeah, I got to the point where I could emit beeps. I could even emit like kind of uh, encoded signals in like a modem style, and uh, I managed to almost decode them uh, using new new radio. Uh, and yeah, that was cool. Only then I had to still put the USB in, connect the thing to the USB to the camera. And it was like already probably April or May, and the event was at the start of July. And we still didn't have the balloon or a lot of logistics things that we had to handle. And so we basically gave up and went with no monitoring. Ooh, scary. <laughs> that wasn't the boring yet. So another program is with a picture every minute. The idea was to make a time lapse. Here's an example of a time lapse. They could not know where uh, as well, like another project uh, from Lamb Solo Sal, this is him. The the guy who installed that. That was pretty cool. Uh, anyway, not the subject of this talk. And um, so how do you do a time lapse? How do you create a video from other pictures? That's simple. You use GStreamer. Um, so basically there's an element called multi-file SRC and you can give it J JPEGs and from that it gives you a video stream and you can encode it and everything. So it was just a relatively simple GStreamer pipeline with GS knowledge. Uh, like no coding involved basically. It was rather easy, so kudos to GStreamer. And then there was another program. Uh, things were a bit like draw the hippo here. Uh, think you can see that the image is not very stable, it's moving. That, that video was taken from a boat. I uh, can show it again, maybe. Ooh, Joe. Um, and, um, so, um, yeah, with, with a camera from Balloon, I had, we had similar difficulties of shakiness, but even worse, because you have a balloon, it's in some position, you take a picture, one minute later, when you take the second picture, the camera is gonna rotate around the screen, the balloon is gonna move with the wind to some other position, so two consecutive frames in your videos are gonna be very different, and you end up with a video that's just pure Feel flickering. Uh, I can show example. That's like one frame. That's the next frame. So as you can see, there's like a huge rotation between the two, and uh, that's not cool in a video. So to straight tackle that, I use OpenCV. OpenCV has plenty of nice tools uh, that help me to like see what's what is the, the movement from one frame to another on basically apply the reverse movement, the reverse matrix, so that one frame maps the previous frames uh, as if, more or less, it was taken from the same position. And OpenCV was cool as well to... Uh, as you can see, you have big black borders on the pictures uh, well, actually, this, well, they were, I think that's the after, but the original are really huge, like, basically the picture was around, uh, a in a circle, and the rest was black. Uh, so, with OpenCV, you can also, like, revert, uh, like, map your round image onto something that's more squarish. And so I wrote a, a GStreamer element using OpenCV, that stabilized thing. You can see a demo of it. So that's the video before, and that's after once stabilized. So Joe is much more peaceful. He doesn't have like stomach issues or anything like that. <laughs> and that 
that's what the final result looks like so far. I'm still thinking of improvements like getting rid of that orange code uh, that should be possible with OpenCV, just needs some work. And yeah, that's what it looks like. So you, if you look carefully, you can see a van going on. You can see people on yeah, the end of the video. Is, there, there's a bug somewhere. <laughs> But yeah, that's the idea. I, I find it pretty cool already. Do we have, okay. I have like five minutes if some people have questions <coughs> about details or other details or things. Yes. What's the hippies? Hmm? What's the hippies? Uh, you can see. Uh, <laughs> you can see like these points are like people going around. Like here you can see a group that was scattering. There are some people, uh, yeah, you can try to spot them, like, these dark points are, are like hippies, like, like in the first picture. They're, yeah, they're quite small from 100 meters high. Yes? Is there a limitation? Is there a limitation on heat? Um, well, there are several aspects to that, uh, like how daring you are. Um, we our limitation. The reason why we had a uh, hundred, we were a hundred meters high, is basically because we had a string of a hundred meters. <laughs> <laughs> we probably could have gone higher. Only when well, you have more string to roll and then roll when you want to get the balloon down or up. And because sometimes you have to do it uh, because the balloon didn't a balloon like that doesn't like wind too much. So if it gets windy, um, like decently windy, I don't know, like not not that much actually, like from 15, 20, yeah, 15 kilometers hour per hour of wind is already gonna put you in trouble. So like on the evening of the first night, there was like a crazy wind on we were like partying at another in you know, another corner of the festival, and and then it was like woo crazy. And oh, I forgot. I think I had another side. Yeah, it was the thanks to my company, these people, and um, all the people who helped. And yeah, I didn't name him, but we were there were two of us. Uh, I was with uh, a guy called Hugo Riboni, who was actually the real mastermind behind the project. Other questions? Yes? Did we consider installing a parachute in case the balloon blew up? Did we consider installing a parachute? Uh, we did consider it at some point and quickly discarded it because like everything we didn't have the time, it didn't seem like that much of a priority. Um, we were trusting the rope basically. It was some good like kite rope in I don't remember the name of the material. But it, it could theoretically support like a hundred kilos, and the pool we measured from our balloon was like maybe two kilos, and uh, with like very big winds, it could maybe reach ten kilos or something like that. But we were far below the limits. Uh, even though at some point when we attached the balloon, we didn't really know how to do this, and we like almost lost it, <laughs> but we didn't. Uh, yes, in anyway. When When the balloon was up, there were two, ki two, still two kilos of pull in the rope? Um, was, was there still two kilos of uh, pull on the rope when the balloon was up uh, with the load, I guess you mean? Um, I don't remember what the, well, the total pull uh, empty was more than two kilos. I think it was more like three or four. Then we had a load of around one kilo, so it was, yeah, around two or three, three kilos, I think. That means you can get two kilos of rope higher. Yeah, we could, we could have got two, two kilos of rope higher, yeah, indeed. But the rope, yeah, the rope actually was rather light, I think. These 100 meters were probably, I don't remember how much, but like less than 100 grams for real in that order of magnitude. 
Yes. Uh, so you, uh, you use OpenCV and you write an extension that uses OpenCV in the GC. Yes. So you didn't have to do any other changes to any of the other pieces of software? Sorry? Did you have to do any other changes to any of the software? Did, did I have to do other changes to the software? Uh, so not really, I, like I wrote that element that uses OpenCV. Actually it's like, I think less than 500 lines of Python. And uh, yeah, just using the Python bindings of OpenCV. And, and no, I didn't, like I didn't have bad bugs or I think my time is up. So thank you all. And if you have more questions on this day to offer me a beer or <laughs> I'll just f find me at the around here or just in the corridor. Thank you. It's non-floating.